As amateur filmmakers, we want you to focus on the essence of creating a film rather than the technical, financially draining aspects. Of course, as you grow and begin to experiment, you can up your game and invest in fancier equipment like drones and gimbals. But for now, let's focus on how to make use of the things that you already have to create a cinematic film with no budget. Let's start with the basic phone camera. Most phone cameras are capable of shooting pretty cinematic videos if used correctly. I highly recommend downloading a filmmaking app like Filmic Pro because it lets you control two very important things, shutter speed and ISO. Shutter speed is how long an image is exposed to light. It can be milliseconds or even minutes. This controls how blurred or clear your video looks. Cinematic videos usually mimic our eyes' natural shutter speed. That is, things blur when they're moving too fast. Ideally, you want your shutter speed to be 1 50th. When you do this, your image will become very bright or exposed. Here's when you need to decrease your ISO. Your ISO will change in different locations depending on the light, but it's best to have a lower ISO so that your video does not have any digital noise. So basically, remember two things. Shutter speed should be 1 50th and ISO should be low. Of course, in darker locations, your ISO is bound to go higher, but try to avoid this. You can implement these settings on an iPhone using the Filmic Pro app mentioned earlier and set on a DSLR normally. This will dramatically change the quality of your videos. Lastly, composition. This is just how the subjects in your video are placed within the frame. Again, for a cinematic look, you want to mimic the natural eye level. To do this, you should place your subject's eye line in line with the camera lens. The best thing to do to accomplish this is to use a tripod. However, it's possible that a tripod isn't easily available to you. The first time I made a film, I used a pile of books as a makeshift tripod. This is the cheapest and most effective way to control your eye line and composition. Another tip is to place your subjects in the left third of your frame. Making these tiny changes can completely change the look of your footage and add a more professional touch. After you have your equipment set up, it's time to work with the cast and crew to bring your vision to life. The first thing you should do is get to know them and become their friend. You don't have to be besties who do everything together with each member of the cast and crew, but encourage them and devote some time to them even if you're busy. After all, they are the backbone of your movie. When directing actors, most directors will use adjectives and present an end result. For example, saying things like be excited, be worried, be angry will lead the actor to fake an emotion rather than actually experience it. To get a more authentic performance and to give your actor a little bit of a little bit of breathing space, use verbs. Say things like convince us you're worried or insist that you're angry. This will allow your actor to express more complex and realistic emotions as well as the chance to improvise a little and make their role their own. Some popular techniques to help get actors into character include hot seating and invoking memories. Hot seating involves interviewing the actor with questions about their backstory, their personal life, hobbies, dreams, things like that, and having the actor answer the questions as their character would. This helps the actor get into character as well as think about the character's backstory, hobbies, things, and all the different types of dimensions that we outlined in the writing video. Another popular strategy is the invoking memory strategy, where you ask actors to think about a memory similar to that of the character's situation, so that the actor can relate to the character and express an emotion like the actor would. The previous tips were mostly general and don't need to be used all at the same time while making the same movie. But one tip that is universal and can be applied pretty much anywhere is to always have one take done for safety. Even if an actor does exactly what you wanted in a certain take, film one again anyways just to see if they can do it better or not. Working with your crew is 
as important as working with your actors but in some ways is much tougher because as a director you have a lot of departments that you need to effectively communicate with and collaborate with one of the key things to keep in mind is to always stay organized and respectful to each of your crew and cast members stay staying organized will show everyone that you're reliable you're dependable and you display good leadership being respectful to everyone will keep everyone in high spirits and be more inclined to work with you in the future as well each member of your crew is important and can bring a number of perspectives to the table even for things outside of their department costume designers can have notes on lighting and lighting technicians can have notes on dialogue it's important to stay open and listen to each person's suggestions but it's even more important to know which ones to include and which ones to exclude keep in mind that including some ideas and excluding certain other ones can have a negative effect on some people's morale so try to be appropriately nice and appreciative of each one's ideas convey your ideas clearly from the start and try not to be too blunt or condescending about it your crew will love someone with a concrete vision who knows exactly what they want but they'll hate a know it all collaborating effectively with your cast and crew will allow them to perform the best that they can it will compel your peers to want to collaborate with you and make them want to do it in the future and most importantly it will make your film the best that it can be